Oh, hello everybody and welcome back. I'm Katie Neal from Borenwood Physio and this is the Borenwood Physio Clinic. Um, it is our last session in the six week series for health and well-being and I think like many of you during lockdown were kind of thinking, God, how did that time fly? That's gone really quickly, although at some moments I'm sure like me it felt like it was dragging on. Um, with those ups and downs and roller coasters that we've all been feeling. I'm really excited about this last session. It's again going to be um, taken with Renit Gerber, who is creative director um, and manager of the Smile system. And this is about what is freedom really, and how in this sense of lockdown, in this sense of an uncertain time, we can create opportunities for ourselves to create that feeling of freedom within when maybe we can't experience freedom in the normal way that we would do. So the way the session is going to work today is Renee is going to hold the first part of the space and then we're going to come back to me just for a really short little relaxation um, tip. It kind of pulls in different parts of different many different practices I'm really focusing on just some really simple ways to come back into your body. So I don't tend to use one method above another. There's some practitioners who specialize in specific types of relaxation. But for me, you're just going to get something that works really beautifully with a lot of my patients and something that I can weave into my Pilates classes as well. Although, to be honest, I think they want me to do more of that and I tend to be Kind of going through quite high level exercises with them. So we're really excited to help you at this time try and stay fit, well and healthy. We hope you get as much out of this session as we did even just talking about it as we prepared. So I'm going to hand over to Renit and if you miss anything that she has said or she talks about references to other videos, the videos are on our Facebook channel Boring with Physio and some of them and more are going up on my YouTube page, Katie Neal Physio and Pilates. So feel free to have a look at those. So over to you, Renit. Thank you, Katie. And I think I realised that I recorded that without with the wrong camera on. <laughs> it's okay. I couldn't signal you to tell you. I said something. <laughs> <laughs> that is hilarious. Uh, anyway, let me just say hello again to everybody. Thank you, Katie, for that lovely introduction. We are both super excited about the topic um, of today's session. I'm going to actually be talking to you about freedom. And actually, what is freedom really? And how can you experience freedom when we're in lockdown? And why I love it so much is that this is going to be a topic relevant to you always. It's going to be relevant to you now and it will be relevant to you for the rest of time because actually freedom means different things to different people, doesn't it? Freedom means different things to all of us, to each of us. And I guess before we can explore what freedom truly is, let's have a quick look at what imprisons us. And if you would like to comment either on the Zoom uh, chat or if you have something to say and you're watching us on Facebook, please do interact with me. It would be lovely to, to be able to support you through the session in that way. And I know Katie's going to be um, keeping an eye on both conversations um, to make sure that everybody who does comment gets, um, gets the response that they deserve. So uh, the first thing to explore is what imprisons us. And as I've already said, that is different for different people, okay? Different things make us feel trapped, different things make us feel stuck, depending on who we are, depending on the times that we're living in. So at the moment, so many people are experiencing lockdown in very many different ways. Some are feeling particularly stuck and trapped and everything that that comes with. Others are feeling a huge sense of release because all of the day-to-day the -day running and stress and pressure has been removed. And therefore, they are, although they are physically in lockdown, physically uh, restricted, they are feeling and experiencing a huge sense of freedom. 
So depending on the times we live in, depending on what is going on in our world. And when I say our world, I don't only mean the bigger world out there, but our world as, a, as an individual. So that's you and what's going on in your space around you, in your community around you, your family bubble or unit. Uh, so depending on what, what's going on around there, you can either experience this feeling of imprisonment and of tr being trapped. Uh, we can also feel imprisoned by different organizations that we're involved in and restricted by, by whatever things we need to conform to there. Other things that I've, I've spoken to people about that imprison them are things like background, upbringing, certain cultural or religious restrictions, for example, can make people feel imprisoned. And really and truly, when you think about what, what freedom is or what imprisons us, how we feel trapped, the opposite to free, um, I really feel that the truth lies in our perceived or possibly experienced limitations. That's where we feel stuck. Now, that's kind of the stuckness that we feel, the imprisonment that we feel. In truth, though, when we think about freedom, I believe that our understanding or our definition or maybe even just our expectations of what freedom actually is, what it will feel like, is fundamentally flawed. I think people strive for freedom. They really, really do. Um, you know, we always want that. We're longing to be free because that feels powerful and, and rela released. But I think it's a flawed concept because can you ever truly be free? Can you ever truly experience freedom if you have never had or have never experienced that feeling of being imprisoned, stuck, trapped, etc., in some way? So it's kind of like light and dark. Without darkness, you would never appreciate or experience light. So in a way, to truly, I mean, this is just something to consider, to truly experience freedom, there needs to be the opposite of that as well, doesn't there, in a sense? Or does there? Just a question to mull over, to consider, as we dive into this topic of freedom. And I'm exploring it from this angle because I think it's almost about redefining how we experience or we see freedom and what that truly means. And if we start from where we're at, when we don't feel free, to realize and appreciate that it's only in, because of that, with thanks to that feeling, that we get to really connect and feel and experience true freedom. The thing I'd love to um, invite you to consider, um, and I read this somewhere, so I wish it was my own, but I read it somewhere and I really wanted to share it with you today. In reality, we are, we live in a world in a society where there are things that we have to get done. There are things that need doing, given the choices that we've made and where we are in life. We have to earn money to, to eat and to pay our mortgage and to survive if that's the route, the path that we have chosen to live. So really, the freedom that we are left with is the freedom to think and reflect, the freedom to stop and to enjoy the company of the people around us, our immediate family, enjoy our own company if we, we, we're alone and we, we haven't got that immediate family around us at the moment, the freedom to contribute to our community in whichever way we can. That really is the freedom and the opportunity that is open to us right here, right now. The freedom to think and reflect and to enjoy where we're at and to contribute. And um, I promised when I shared uh, today's session, I promised that I would be uh, sharing with you five steps to freedom. So uh, I don't know if you've got a pen and paper and you want to write these down. If you would rather, I'm happy to email you this list. Uh, if you just reach out and let Katie or myself know that you'd like me to send this to you. But here we go. The five steps to freedom to support you specifically when you are feeling stuck. Because we've all experienced stuckness, right? 
in whichever area it could be internal, external, environmental, community, whatever it is, there are five steps uh, that I feel help you towards freedom, support you to experience freedom. So here they are. Step number one is to acknowledge your stuckness. Acknowledge your stuckness. And what I mean by that is oftentimes, although we feel trapped and stuck, we don't take time to acknowledge that that is actually what's going on for us. To look at it, to acknowledge it, rather than pushing it away. You know, I don't know if you're like me, I want to be positive. I've committed my life to being a positive person. And for a very long time, I thought that that meant I would have to push any thing that felt restrictive and negative away. And therefore I was pushing it away and pushing it away and never dealing with it. So step number one to freedom, acknowledge your stuckness. Step number two is to forgive yourself. In a way to connect with your inner child and to forgive yourself for whatever got you stuck in the first place, all too often we beat ourselves up. We are so hard on ourselves that that makes us even more stuck. So step number one is to acknowledge the stuckness, but step number two is to forgive yourself for that. Uh, a lot of work here around going inwards, potentially healing your inner child. Um, you know, the things that we get stuck with are usually coming from past perceived dangers or threats, etc. I've spoken about this a lot. And perhaps going back in time, thinking about how and why that stuckness is showing up for you, and then forgiving yourself at the same time. Step number three. Step number three is probably the one thing that has really saved me from feeling stuck and trapped in so many different circumstances and, and situations. And step number three is to connect to something more. Now, for some people watching, that could be a spiritual connection, something outside of yourself. For others, it can be connecting to, to nature, connecting to the universe, connecting to Mother Earth, just to take some time to actually connect to something outside of the stuckness. Sit in the garden if you can, have a walk in nature, in the forest, in the trees, go and sit by a body of water, smell some flowers, get some flowers, you know, do something to connect to something more, to something bigger than yourself. And as part of step number three and connecting to something more, take it a step even further and connect to your purpose. You know, we all have a reason for being. We're all here with some, some reason, some purpose. No one is here. Nothing happens and is, nothing is here by accident. So find a purpose or even more so find your purpose. And that all ties into connecting something more because when you're connected to your purpose and you're connected to something bigger than yourself, it's much more expansive and you see so much more and that's when solutions and release can come so just to go over the first three steps before i move on to four and five step number one acknowledge your stuckness step number two forgive yourself and do some healing internally around your stuckness step number three connect to something more find your purpose and connect and engage in that and engage in nature and remember that you're part of a much 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 bigger world than whatever is keeping you stuck. Step number four, learn to trust. Now, when I talk about trust, this is a really massive concept and is so supportive and empowering. And I'm talking about trusting who? Who could I be talking about here? Trusting yourself. Learn to trust yourself. Learn and experience trusting the universe. 
trust is a very powerful thing because it allows you to be more open. And step number five, which actually connects to all of these things and all of the different steps will support you in step number five, the simplest and yet the hardest thing of all, but the key to true freedom. Choose to let go. Choose to let go of whatever is keeping you stuck, whatever is stopping you from feeling and experiencing freedom. And with this, remember, we're speaking about freedom as an experience that is available to you in any moment in time. When you rise above that feeling of stuckness and you choose to go through these five different steps and then let go of that stuckness, commit to it, take a leap of faith, perhaps, and here's the invitation to you before I hand back to, to um, Katie. And the invitation to you is choose to see the potential and the possibility. Choose to see the other side of that stuckness and to find the freedom inside of that for you. I'd love to know your thoughts and your feedback. Please do feel free to hop on here and to share with us and to ask any questions that you may have. Katie, I'm all done and I'm handing the reins back over to you. Thank you so much for watching. Hello, everybody. Um, I'm just going to now be on the correct camera today, which is actually going to be sitting down, which is what I don't normally do. So, hello, everybody. Yeah, I was meant to be here. I got the orders of the cameras wrong, which is really unusual for me, having done this so many times. So thank you so much. Um, those are five amazing tips. And I think um, it's really useful to contact Renee if you need and to discuss them more fully. She has a wealth of knowledge and expertise and can really help you unpick some of these things. But just remembering that there are five steps involved um, and those five steps are simple um, and can be done bit by bit can really help you when you feel a bit overwhelmed. So the next thing I'm going to do is go through a really simple relaxation practice. Um, for the first time in all my sessions, I am not demonstrating anything. It is just going to be by my voice. So I'm sitting down. I don't think I have ever done a sit down session in about 17. So what I would invite you to do now is um, have a lie down on your sofa, have a lie down on your floor, have a lie down on your bed, sit in your chair. I'm sitting in my chair. And what you may notice as I talk is that my eyes will close because the likelihood is I will be joining in with this at the same time. So we're going to start off with relaxation. Why is relaxation important? Um, we have two systems in our body and we commonly know them as the fight or flight systems. And we also have the rest and digest part of it and even if we're not aware of it when there is adrenaline when there is stress when there is depression when there are thoughts going around our brain again and again that tends to link in with this fight and flight system what it doesn't help us do is calm down to slow down and we know from research and you're seeing it more and more in this time that actually being able to sleep and rest and connect with ourselves will help your overall health. It helps your immunity. It helps on the reverse, it helps your sleep. Um, it helps your mental health. And the rest and digest is the system that we want to activate. And yes, if there is something bigger going on, which is this is this is not necessarily the space for than some form of other talking therapy with a qualified practitioner is going to be essential. But this is just like a quick win that in whatever space you're in, you can stop for five minutes and just try and reset your system. Medically, we call these the sympathetic system or the parasympathetic system. And that's 
the medical terms for our fight and flight or our rest and digest. So enough of that kind of background talk, let's just get straight into it. And I invite you to just welcome whatever feeling comes up, letting go of that expectation to relax and just knowing that you're going to be feeling into your body, feeling into your breath and changing the state that you feel right now and some really quick things. You cannot fail. There isn't a right or wrong. And so from wherever you are, if you feel comfortable to close your eyes or soften your gaze, please do. What can be very helpful is if you need to open your eyes again, just to have a quick look is to um, link your hands like this. So you spread your fingers and you just kind of rest your fingertips together. And you take that and you, you pop it on your belly and I can, you're still looking, I can push back on my wheelie chair. Maybe I'll stay here because that's quite nice in case any of you open your eyes. And so from here, if you are in sitting, I invite you to really feel your feet on the floor. And if that means taking a moment to take your shoes off, if you feel encouraged to take your socks off, please do. If you're lying, I'd like you to be aware of the feeling of the surface underneath your body. Just noticing how it holds and supports you. And everyone in sitting or lying or whatever position you're in, just draw awareness to the pressure of the surface that you're against on your body and allow it to hold you. The floor is holding your feet if you're sitting. Your back is supported by a chair. Your back is supported by a couch or a bed. Your head and neck are supported as well. You're being held. Notice your hands resting on your belly. Notice your fingers overlapping. Feel the energy coming down through the body, into your stomach, into your legs, creating some heaviness, dropping away from the shoulders. With your eyes closed, think about focusing on the breath coming in through your nose and out through your mouth. Gently coming in through the nose and out through the mouth. Now notice if with this breath, as you draw it in, you can be aware of it going down through your throat, into your chest, down into the belly. And you may be aware of this by noticing your hands with your fingers interlaced. And as the breath gently is drawn down into the belly, you can feel those fingers gently sliding apart and back together ever so softly. And if you're not noticing anything more than the rise and fall of your belly, that is absolutely fine. So with the next breath in, noticing if you can think about it as it comes through your nose, down through your chest, maybe being aware if you can feel your ribs open up as well. So your ribs are expanding your belly is gently rising and falling. Focusing your concentration on this without judgment, just with awareness. If you feel comfortable, 
We're going to see if we can extend the breath. So we're going to breathe in for a count of three, two, one, and out for the count of three, two, one. In for the count of three, and out. Noticing that breath in. Noticing that breath out. And we're gonna try a practice that encourages the out breath to become a bit longer than your in breath. At any point that this feels uncomfortable, just focus on breathing in for three, and out for three. So we're going to breathe in for that count of three and then out for a count of four, three, two, one. In for a count of three, two, one. Out for a count of four, three, two, one. And again, in. Out, in, and out, in, and out. And if we can make that out breath a moment longer, I'll invite you to see if you can breathe out for five. So we're going to breathe in, out, one, two, three, four, five, and in, and out, and in, and out. And one more round in and out. And just go back to that gentle breathing in for three, out for three, in for three, out for three. Noticing that breath coming in. Noticing that breath going out. Keep going in. And out. And in. And out. And then Coming back to your regular breathing, drawing your awareness back to the surface that you're lying on or sitting on, allowing your attention to come back to your feet on the floor. Just gently unclasp your fingers, give them a little shake. Maybe open your eyes. Give your body a bit of a wiggle. There's no need to rush out of the position that you're in. And now that you're back in the present moment, just take one more lovely deep breath in, maybe reaching your arms all the way up, stretching up and then breathing out. Just letting everything go and breathing in and breathing out. So thank you for joining me in that practice. I wanted that to be very short and sweet. It is something that if you catch yourself in that moment, that you can't think clearly enough to even think about those amazing tips that Renit gave you. Just sitting wherever you are, leaning against the wall, leaning against the tree if you're out, 
and just coming back into that really can change our state in our body because we need to be in that rest and digest state for us to be able to think clearly. And sometimes we need a physical act to help us do this. And it doesn't have to be difficult and complicated. And I invited you to try and make that out breath longer. And that is one technique. There are many, and you may know some others yourself that helps us get that rest and digest system kicking in. So thank you so much everybody for joining in these health and well-being series. I'm going to just see if Renit has anything else to add. I'll wiggle forward so I can change this over. Um, I don't know, Renit, if there's anything else you want to add to that. Oh, Katie, I just wanted to say thank you to you for that um, amazing session. All too often, we don't remember to stop and take a moment, to stop and actually breathe. And I think that exercise that you just shared with us will really help to recenter us and to reground us which again is about going within so that then you can kind of almost come back and have new resources or, or renewed resources to be able to face whatever's going on so thank you so much and just wanted to also say thank you and well done for an amazing series that you've put on for everybody uh, through your clinic and your practice it's been absolutely wonderful I just wanted to publicly thank you for sharing so unconditionally and so freedom your wisdom your knowledge your expertise it's truly truly wonderful um i actually popped up on my phone a little quote that i thought i would share with everybody just to round off our session i'm a bit emotional that it's our last one so when this popped up on my phone i thought i would share it it actually came via an email that um came through it's a quote by og mandino who i have to be honest i have no idea who that even is but the quote is beautiful nonetheless <laughs> And it says, I will love the light for it shows me the way. Yet I will endure the darkness for it shows me the stars. Oh, I mean, oh. isn't that just beautiful? And I just, even what we've been talking about, what you've just done with us, isn't it absolutely fortuitous and meant to be shared with everybody today? I will love the light for it shows me the way. Yet I will endure the darkness for it shows me the stars and to everybody watching you are stars you are inspiring whatever it is that's keeping you stuck wherever you don't feel free in your life remember that true feeling of freedom comes from within and you have everything that you need within you to really really shine and be free wherever you are and whatever you are doing thank you oh wow that is a quote that i'm gonna write down um you see me as a physio here, but I have an absolute passion for nature and outdoors. And that just makes me smile inside and out and with all the cells of my body, makes me really, really happy. So thank you all so much today. Thank you for joining us. Thank you for those of you that are watching um, on the playback, who've been watching on live. I know there are people who are gonna download this session later because they've told me that they couldn't make it today. So thank you again. You can find me um, at Borenwood Physio. All of our links to the bios are included um, underneath the video links. And I'm sorry if that looks like a really long thing, because it is. <laughs> um, but I think it's important that you actually get to know who we are as, as people and all the contacts for Renit as well. I'm going to be signing off. There will be more sessions, um, but this is the end of this six-week block for now. So bye-bye.